Here we're going to take a look and a closer look actually at what actually causes sound waves and what they actually are. Sound waves are what we call periodic waves. They move, uh, the waves move in a, I guess, spherical direction, but what we're doing here is we're going to put the sound in a pipe. Uh, we're going to cause pressure waves in this pipe by a moving piston, so we have everything confined to a tube-like structure, and we're going to study this a little bit to get a better understanding of what sound waves really are. So whenever sound waves are produced, like they're being produced right now by my vocal cords, something in here is vibrating back and forth, pushing against the wind, or I shouldn't say wind, pushing against the air in my throat, and vibrating back and forth, causing compressions in that air near where that object is vibrating, my vocal cords are vibrating. So same thing over here, we have a tube and we have a piston going back and forth, kind of like the vocal cords, and as they're moving to the right, they're pushing the air molecules closer together. Then when the piston moves back to the left, it allows for like a vacuum there and air molecules rush back into that evacuated region. When air molecules are compressed together like they are here, that compression will then continue through the air. So here we have what we would call normal air pressure, atmospheric pressure, and here we have pressure higher than atmospheric pressure, so we call that the high pressure point. We call that a compression region in the, in the wave. And so that's caused by all these molecules being pushed to the right. It's kind of like a spring. It pushes the molecules next to it to the right, and that then gets pushed to the right, and they get pushed to the right. And so this compression continues through the air, and the, the rate at which they do that is the speed of sound. So those compressions move to the right at the speed of sound, V of sound. When the piston goes back to the left, this then is an evacuated region. Of course, the molecules rush right away back in there, but there's a delay, and so there's what we would call a low pressure region. Then when the piston comes back again, it pushes those molecules together, and again, that compression region starts moving to the right. The distance between two compressions like that is called the wavelength. And notice if you want to look at it, and let me get a different color so I can show you. So this would be high pressure right here. Over here, this is normal or atmospheric pressure and that would be this point right there. Then over here, this is a rarefied region. This is called a rarefaction, a region where the pressure is lower than the air pressure. That's caused by the piston moving back, evacuating the air, and the air molecules rushing back in, but they don't fill it up as much, and so there's less pressure there, so this is low pressure. Then we get back to a region where it's normal atmospheric pressure, which is right here. And then we get back to the region where it's high pressure. So this high, normal, low, normal, high pressure. And the difference between those two pressure points, uh, that's called a wavelength. Now, since we, can re since we can represent the changes in the pressure in the air, which is essentially what a sound wave is, is a sound wave is really a pressure wave, or sets of pressure waves, I should say a set of compressions within the waves moving to the right, we can express that as a function. So we can say that the change in the pressure is equal to the maximum pressure, that would be the maximum amplitude of the pressure. You can see as it's kind of like a sine wave, right? And so therefore we can call it the sine of kx minus omega t. So it's the exact same equation as the waves on a string. Now, notice that this is indeed a sine wave because I said at t equals zero, we're at this location right here, so the pressure is normal. This is atmospheric pressure, so no deviation in the pressure from normal. Then high pressure, normal, low pressure, normal, high pressure, normal, and so forth. So the delta P max is simply the largest deviation in the pressure in the air from normal to the maximum compression points. The K is the wave number, so K is called the wave number. And the wave number is defined as 2 pi divided by lambda. So there's definitely a relationship between the wavelength and the wave number. Omega, of course, is the angular frequency. Omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency of the oscillation. So the frequency of the oscillation of the, um, of the, of the piston right here is f. Then omega would be 2 pi f, and that's what goes in here. And that then describes the pressure as a function of position in the x-direction and the pressure in fun in, uh, as a function of time combined give you that wave. So this represents 
the wave equation that defines the pressure variation in a sound wave which is caused by something that's vibrating and therefore making those those uh, compressions one after the other which then move through the air at the speed of sound and that's how you can define periodic sound waves caused by a vibrating object